This is the 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special. Brought to you by Kemba Credit Union. Kemba, your trusted next door financial partner. Hello everyone and welcome in to the 2022 National Signing Day Special for Miami Red Hawk Football. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. And over the next couple of hours, we will introduce you to a brand new class of Red Hawks signing their national letters of intent to attend Miami University and play football for this gentleman, head coach Chuck Martin and his staff. As Coach Martin joins us here. Coach, uh, before we talk about the athletes that have signed their letter, let's, let's talk about recruiting this class uh, because so much has changed with the portal. Super seniors, I mean, Ryan McWood, a seventh year senior, how do you recruit that piece? And, you know, there's just so much has changed. And when you look at this class, you, I mean, you sat down and said, yeah, every, everything has changed so much, you know, that uh, it, it's tough to comprehend the class as you see it. Yeah, no, well, obviously the last couple of years, recruiting has changed um, 100%. It's totally different. Um, you talked about the transfer portal, obviously, with kids coming in. There's 1,900 kids in the last, whatever, two weeks. Mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about 2,000 free agents available to recruit. Um, you talk about the super seniors, that there's still the effect of the COVID year 2020 didn't count. Right. So to manage your roster in the past, you kind of had, you know, you had your seniors, you had some redshirt seniors, you had some fourth year kids, you had some fifth year kids. Now, now you, you, you know, everyone that was around in college in 2020 got that extra year. So right. it wasn't just like, okay, well, one year you got an extra super senior. No, next year you got a super senior. Next year you got a super senior. Yeah. Um, and then again, it's, it's, it's given college kids the most flexibility. I know a right. lot of people don't like the portal. Um, you, you hear a lot of negativity about the portal. Um, a lot of the high school feel like you're screwing the high school kids. They don't have as many opportunities, which I think on the front end, there are less high school kids being signed. There's no doubt, but I always remind the high school coaches and the, the people that complain about like, once they go away to college, they're still your kids mm -hmm. and they have a lot more rights and freedom than they've ever had. So like, so if you played at Talawanda High School and you went to college somewhere, yeah, maybe it's harder to get a scholarship out of high school right. because there's more competition with all these kids in the portal. But once you get to college, you have those rights and privileges and these high school coaches still care about their kids after they leave for college. So right. to try to manage your roster, like I said, you still have to have a long-term plan. Um, we, we still have, you know, the heart and soul of our football team is going to be kids that we recruited out of the Midwest high school, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's been our base forever. Um, because of the portal, there's some unforeseen roster adjustments that you're going to have to make year to year um, mm -hmm. that you can't plan ahead for. Because right. you like to forecast and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to need a kicker. We're going to need a left end. We're going right. to need a tight end. Where the, with the portal, sometimes you think you're good in an area and then you're not so good in an area. So then you, have to, you have to switch gears quickly. And we did it a year ago at defensive end. We weren't necessarily going into the offseason thinking we're going to take some DNs in the portal, but then you lose a couple DNs and all of a sudden you're like, well, we need to replace them. We were counting on having an upper class DN and now we don't have an upper class DN. So it's, there is the five year plan. There is the long term plan. Um, but there's also, you're going to have to adjust and manage your roster on a yearly basis and rebuild your team in one year mm. if, you, if necessary. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can't just say, well, we didn't plan for that. Well, you can't plan for that. And that's right. So um, it's like everything else. There's good and bad for the right kid, you know, jumping in the portal. You know, we have some kids on our team that jumped in the portal that did it with our blessing. Like they're yeah. good kids. They're good players. They're good students. They weren't high enough on the depth chart here that was giving them the playing time that they were looking for. So they're moving on, looking for an opportunity to get more playing time. And this is their one chance to go through college football, which yeah. th that makes a lot of sense. There's other kids that, you know, there's some of the top end starting quarterbacks in the country that are leaving because they can. It's okay for them. They, they're just, they're just getting re-recruited. You know, I, yeah. I started for three or four years at this school and I'm moving on, you know, and I'm going to try to, I don't know where they're going, but apparently they're not happy where they're at. Um, and then there's other kids that jump in that probably shouldn't. Right. There's a lot of kids back in this year mm -hmm. that were in last year and were really good players. You know, there's, there's a couple of kids who are, you know, thousand yard rushers in their league. Yeah jump to get to a higher league 
got 24 carries this year and are thinking, probably, man, I should have stayed while I was Where a thousand yard rusher. Yeah. So there, it's not an exact science like anything in recruiting. Right. Sometimes kids jump and strike gold, but most of the time they don't jump and strike gold. A lot of times they find themselves in a worse situation than, than they did before. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just something that we have to deal with. And I always say, we don't call it the coach's portal. Right. If we did, yeah. people would be a lot less upset about the player's portal. Right. We don't, when, when the head coach at Cincinnati goes to Wisconsin, yeah. and then the head coach at Louisville goes to Cincinnati, and then the head coach at Purdue goes, and we're not talking about the thousands of assistants that are right. all moving around as you know, well, right? You know, a MAC player looking to go Power Five. Well, there's a lot of MAC assistants looking to go Power Five. Yeah. But when they do it, they're just doing it to better themselves and their family. Right. But if a kid does it, it makes them a bad kid. Right. But, yeah. you know, you lose there's a D lineman, then you lose yeah. your D line coach, and it's like, well, well, it wasn't, and that was the whole genesis behind all this. That's kids are like, well, coaches can move whenever they want. Why can't we move whenever right. we want? So, is it chaotic? Yes. Is it people call it the Wild Wild West? Is it exciting? Again, it's it's just more excitement for college football in my mind. Is it, you know, am I gonna have to work over Christmas? You should get some time off over Christmas. Well, I'm not gonna get any time off over Christmas because there's a there's another window to have kids visits. We're dead right now. There's another window to have kids visits early that first week in January after New Year's. Well, to get those, you got to work to get work those kids here. So, yeah, yeah is, it, is it perfect? No, but nothing's perfect. But um, to me, it's, it's making everything more exciting, to be honest with you. And there's a new element for you that you haven't had in the past years that, uh, you know, you've been here at Miami. You had five new coaches on the staff. And, and tell us uh, about bringing them in and, and getting them involved in the recruiting process. Did, did, did that change anything? Yeah, it always does when you have five, you know. Yeah. So obviously, you know, Coach Bernowski did a heck of a job for us this year, and um, he's recruiting a high-end kicker, high-end punter that we feel like we're pretty close with both of them. Um, and, and obviously with all our specialists back, we're looking for the next guys. We had, you know, we had a situation the first, when we got here, Sloman, Crabtree, oh, yeah. and Kramer came here as walk-ons, took the leap of faith. They believed in, they believed in themselves, but they also believed me when I said, hey, if you become a starter, you're going to be on full scholarship. They all not only did that, but had remarkable careers for us. The, the second group is with us right now. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a great run of specialists uh, with Graham, Dom, and, and, and Brendan. Um, and they all took the same leap of faith and came here, and then they've, they've earned their way. So we're trying to get that third wave. Uh, but the proof to us is that our guys have done it, and, mm -hmm. and then they've been rewarded. Um, so we're excited about So obviously with New ST and then – our special teams were tremendous this year. I know we, did, we started off a little slow against Kentucky. It wasn't our best day of the year, yeah. but after that, we, we did so many good things on ST. And with all our specialists back and so many defensive players back on our coverage teams, we're, you know, we're going to lose Jay Walk as a returner. But yeah. uh, we, we have a great future next year. And, and again, when you look at winning football, special teams are so important. Yeah. The frustrating thing about this year is when you, when you really look at the numbers of what we did, we did all the things for the most part you need to do to win football games. Right. You know, and one is play great special teams, and we did. You know, another one is play great defense, we did. Another one is win the turnover margin. We're top ten in the country in turnover margin. Like all the things that produce winning football, uh, a lot of them are are right in where we favor. want. Yeah. Right where we want to be is what good football teams do, and special teams is obviously a big part of that. Obviously, on the defense side of the ball, Coach Bowen, Coach Blanton, and, and Coach Burton came in, um, and. and Tough year transition defensively because you bring in three new coaches, right? And you bring in a bunch of new players, whether they're young guys that haven't been on varsity, they've been on scout team, that you know the 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 Caden Woolards who are now it's their time to step up and become the guy, or it's guys that we had brought in, maybe to replace some guys that left in the portal, and the amount of time and energy it spent to try to get everybody on the same page. That group with Coach Greek and leading that group did a tremendous job, and obviously we mm -hmm. played tremendous defense. He, the entire season and then the injuries on that side of the ball uh, that we had to deal with and overcome you know Quez Warren started the year at nickel then we had to move into rover because of injuries and then we had to move into free safety because injuries and and just just those pieces of continuing to move guys around over there and it just every time I thought there was going to be a drop off it just didn't come so right. very 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 pleased then obviously uh, Miles White coming in as a receivers coach um, and Herod an interesting group because you had a couple seniors uh, with Hip and Jaywalk that are proven guys, and, and obviously they had good years, not, not necessarily the year we didn't throw it around um, um, with our quarterback situation as efficiently as we'd like, 
so they didn't have, but they also, they both had really good years, and then a bunch of young guys that he's developing. So uh, never seamless when you have transition, there's always, mm -hmm. but looking forward to year two with all those guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were talking about super seniors, and Ryan McWood has you know, finished his seventh year and final year. I just saw where there's a player, and I can't remember the team. I should remember it all. Just got approval for his ninth year in college football, which is just, that, that has to be a new record. I can't, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, and Woods wasn't really like seven years as Marco, but the COVID year oh, doesn't the COVID count. Year doesn't so count, really, yeah. it's six years. And there's been a number of guys that have played six years of yeah. college football. Just with that, with 2020 not counting towards there's that's what I said, and that that also throws in the management because you have the, everybody's graduating before their eligibility's up. Yeah. So there's more grad transfers than oh, ever. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right? absolutely. So for the right kid, it's a great opportunity. But it's also tough to manage a roster because is he coming back? Is he going to grad transfer? Right. He could come yeah. back. He could like, so. Uh, yeah, no, it's, I'll be happy when the COVID has COVID played, it, played, it played through. through where none yeah. of the guys have that extra year because that will eliminate one thing from my play of trying to figure out who the 105 guys in your roster are going to be because yeah. that all the, well, he's still got two more years left. How could that be, you know? Right. But so, and it, is he coming back? Can we count in those two years? You know, two oh, yeah. years out, he doesn't know what he's going to do two years from now. Yeah. You know what I mean, that's the thing. It's like, well, why can't the kids just tell you? Well, sometimes they don't know. You know, yeah. I've had one kid tell me, like, if I play more next year, I'm going to stay for my next year. But if I don't, I'm just going to get a job. I got I've got my Miami farmer's business degree. degree. I'm going to go right. work. You know, yeah. it's like and I don't know how next year is going to play out, mm -hmm. you know. So it's all those all those uncertainties is, is is it's mind boggling, really, to think about and daily trying to figure out where do we need a guy here? What what you know, we, we would like a guy, but we'd like a younger guy. You know, yeah. there's some positions in the portal. You're looking for an older guy to replace an older guy. Right. There's other times you're like, hmm. I really don't want an older guy. I feel good about my older guys. Yeah. But we're a little short at that position because of the portal. Some, some younger guys left now. Maybe I need a younger guy that can become the next starter. So it's just, it's, 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 it's every situation is different. <laughs> it's every it's even worse than a chess yes. match. I'm no, telling you. No, really no, is. I do I, have one more question about the state of recruiting. And that's because knowing how much film you watch in recruiting, how much time has the portal taken where you have to watch guys in the portal versus high school and, and getting those kids to campus, getting them here, that sort of thing, and trying to analyze film from all of these different sources. Yeah, it's definitely, it takes time to go through all these, you know, all of a sudden 19 our kids are in the portal and you're trying to get through 19 our, it takes a lot of time. So yeah. that's gonna take time from everything else everything you do. Everything else you do, yeah. So not just looking at high school kids, I think the high school recruiting is gonna push back a little bit because this window right now, like the high school juniors are still going to be juniors on February 1st. Right. These kids in the portal, you either get them now or you're not getting it. Right. So like they have to push to the front of the line in the short term because there's only this little window to get these kids. And they're not all of them, but a lot of them are looking for homes next semester. Right. So if you want to bring a kid in for next semester, that has to be the priority versus, you know, the junior in high school. Yeah. Because we just signed the it's seniors, so the seniors senior. are right. fine. Right. But the junior, you got some time because he's got a whole nother football season, a whole nother year. So it definitely puts some things in everything else you do in your job. Like the part, and again, then we have the early bowl game, which yeah. we've got finals, we've got the Bahamas Bowl, <laughs> and you're trying to recruit, which recruit again, kids, yeah. the Bahamas Bowl is wonderful. You wish it was one week later because then, because we missed a, a week in, in the United States. Right where we would have been recruiting high school and portal kids. Right. We try to do as much as we could in the Bahamas, but you're not like all the other coaches in the country can be on the road. Can be on the road. Well, right. There wasn't a lot of, I did see one guy running down a track before our practice. Oh yeah. That I asked him if he knew Wouldn't how to catch a to football because <laughs> he was big, strong and fast enough. Yeah. Absolutely. I said, you ever catch a football? You look like, you know, yeah. so he just laughed and shook his head. No, no. So. <laughs> okay. Well, we will start to introduce you to the new class of Red Hawks in just one moment here. Happy to have you with us here on MiamiRedHawks.com. This is the Miami Football 2022 National Signing Day Special. We'll be back in a moment. Fans, you don't want to miss any Red Hawk action this season. Miami men's basketball returns to the Millette Hall floor tomorrow, December 22nd at 7 p.m. as they take on in-state rival Wright State. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. We can't wait to see you there. Miami Hockey returns to the ice at Steve Coach Katie Arena in the Goggin Ice Center on Friday, December 30th to begin a weekend series with Niagara. 
This Friday night game will have a puck drop of 7.05 p.m., while the Saturday game will have a special 4.05 p.m. start time. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. We can't wait to ring in the new year with you at Goggin Ice Center. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And welcome back in to our 2022 National Signing Day Special for Miami Football. Steve Baker here and rejoined once again by head coach Chuck Martin. And uh, we'll be talking about 16 new Red Hawks and we'll break them down by position group for you. And uh, we'll start with the offensive positions. And let's start with the guys up front. Uh, this was a position that, you know, had some injuries, but the guys stepped up and certainly any kind of depth you can get there. And uh, it looks like uh, you got some pretty good ones here. The first three we're going to talk about will be early enrollees, as a matter of fact, and will be here in just a month or so at Miami University. And let's start in Noblesville, Indiana, Noblesville High School product, Ben Decker, 6'6", 295 pound offensive lineman, coach. Yeah, it comes from obviously Indianapolis where uh, just down the road, a couple hours, running football team. They rushed for over 8,500 yards during his career. Really, really athletic for his size um, and uh, length, athleticism, flexibility, all really, really high end. Um, and, and again, comes from a running program, used to running the football. Um, we're excited to bring in him early in Roley, so we'll get him in the weight room very soon and then obviously get him in spring ball and get him a semester ahead of everyone else. So uh, obviously anytime you get an early Roley, anytime you get a kid that has the length that's six foot six, 295 pounds, um, love Coach Patton, was a guy certainly we were, had, had other options at, at, even after he committed. A lot of people are still recruiting this kid, and but really has a great relationship with Coach Patton, really loves Miami. So uh, we're excited that he's coming aboard, and we're really excited he's coming aboard here in the next couple weeks. Yeah, one of the phrases or terms that you'll hear quite a lot with his class, he, he was a team captain, also was named first team All-State as a junior and senior. And uh, again, 8,500 yards uh, rushing over the past three seasons for Noblesville High School. Up next, an early in, uh, enrollee down in the uh, southwest corner of Indiana, Evansville, Indiana, Wrights Memorial High School, 6'6", 287, Edward Hartig. Yeah, and also great length and, and really good athleticism. Both of the first two kids, Decker and Hartig, we believe can play tackle. Obviously, you can always move them inside, but, but have the length and athleticism to do the pass pro stuff that you need on the edge of Division One football. Also have the athleticism to do to, to handle the athletic defensive ends that you're going to have to handle in the run game. So how they develop, again, is up to them. Um, what they do in the weight room, what they do, how tough they are, all that re always remains to be seen with high school guys. But the raw materials are really, really, really good. They're both great, great kids. They're both really smart kids. They're both from great families. They're both from programs that do it the right way. So um, hard to find six foot six guys in, in the MAC that, can, that aren't really have some athletic deficiencies. Both these kids are really athletic. Yeah, our first team all city honors as a senior, as a junior was ranked the number one interior offensive lineman in the state of Indiana, according to 247 Sports. Also earned first team all Southwest Indiana and first team all district in 2021. That is Edward Hardick from Evansville, Indiana. For our next Miami Red Hawk, we went north of the border, Newmark, Ontario, and Huron Heights High School, 6'8", uh, 285-pound Andrew Lowry. <laughs> yeah, Andrew is, if you watch these highlights, they're, they're pretty amazing. Uh, we, we have recruited Canada some, but you don't get up there much. He's a kid that we knew about, but hadn't been to see him in person. We saw him at camps in the summer. Uh, we saw him over at camp in Indianapolis, and then the, the very next day is pretty amazing. He was driving back to Canada, and we called him. He was up in Michigan. He turned around and came to our camp the next day unbelievable effort by his dad because probably he did most of the most of the driving and Andrew did most of the sleeping uh, but really really long athletic six foot eight the Tommy Doyle mode of mm. has not been exposed to American football so that caliber of competition yeah. um, is, is different uh, yeah. he was it was like father Sunday at the ballpark when you watch his <laughs> tape like he it looked like a lot of fun he like a lot of fun, it looked like right? a Disney movie as he just dominated but even in our camp and in the camp over in Indianapolis, really good feet and really 
he's been coached. He has some pretty good technique for a kid that hasn't played, you know, football growing up like we play football in the States. So he, he, he knows he's a little raw, uh, but his, his upside is, is, is really, really high. So that's amazing kid and a great family and they love football and he can't wait to get here and learn more about yeah, it. Yeah, another early enrollee, Andrew Lowry of Newmark, Ontario, named the 2021 Lyman MVP for the number one ranked team in Canada. Uh, up next, uh, we head to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Steel Valley High School, great high school out there. Ray Brazo is a coach for Gregory Smith Jr., offensive lineman, 6'5", 315 pounds from Pittsburgh. Yeah, Greg is... Greg is a really talented young man, as you'll see on this tape right here. He is big and athletic and can move, um, plays basketball, can dunk a basketball. Uh, first clips I ever saw him, he was, he was kind of, after a workout, just kind of having a good time. And, and they were doing seven on seven, and he was playing safety at 6'6", 315. Now, he doesn't play safety for the high school, but I just watched him move. I'm like, look at that big, and he was laughing and joking and having a good time on this video. And I'm like, Holy cow, like obviously he's not a safety, but that big kid can really, really move. And you can see it on tape. I, uh, comes from a high school, does nothing but wins. They lost in the state semifinal this year. They have a great program. He's been really well coached. Um, but I'm as excited about this kid as anybody in this class from, a, from an upside standpoint. He is, he is tremendously gifted, tremendously athletic, and he's never on the ground. All these guys, that, all four of these old linemen, hard to find the size, this size in the MAC. And this athleticism in the MAC, and, and, and Coach Patton did a great job with that. Did not allow a sack or a pressure in his entire senior season. That alone should be an all conference, all state stat. And that is Gregory Smith Jr. from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And there you have the four offensive linemen recruits for the Miami Redhawks signing their national letters of intent to play for Miami football. We'll take a look at some offensive skill when we come back in just one moment. Stay with us. Miami men's basketball returns after the holidays on Thursday, December 29th at 7 p.m. as they host St. Mary of the Woods on the Millette Hall Hardwood. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. Miami women's basketball makes their return to Millette Hall on Saturday, December 31st at noon as they host Tiffin University. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. We look forward to seeing you back in Millette Hall. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And welcome back in our Miami Football 2022 National Signing Day Special here in our studio at Yeager Stadium. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, and alongside is Miami head football coach Chuck Martin as we are introducing you to the 16 athletes to sign their national letter of intent to attend Miami University and play football beginning this fall. And uh, we move to the offensive skill. We introduced you to the offensive line, and now let's move to the wide receivers and running back for the Miami Red Hawks, and we're going to talk about five athletes in this segment. We'll start in University Park, Illinois, Crete Money High School, Linnell Billups Williams, 5'9, 165 pound wide receiver. Yeah, you're always looking for elite traits in every position, and wideouts are no different. There's a lot of different players that play wideout from 6'5 guys to 5'7 guys. Uh, Linnell's elite traits one, competitiveness, two, really, really good hands, three, dynamic, dynamic with the ball in his hand. Uh, just scored so many touchdowns from so far in high school. Every time he touches the ball, he thinks he's scoring. It's evident on tape. There's there's plays that I think are remarkable, and he's like, yeah, I don't know why you think that was such good. Why would I let that guy tackle me? You know. So, uh, Raw as a route runner will continue to improve as that, but big time playmaker, big time returner, explosive, fast, great vision and feel after he catches the ball. Will be a good returner for us also. Um, played really high competition. Plays for Coach Konecki at Crete Money, one of the best coaches in the Midwest, what he's done. Uh, Crete Money has always been a place with a lot of ability, but never never really won much. And then Coach Konecki got there and really turned it into more like a college program. So you got a kid that's been coached and understands the importance of preparation, all that. So uh, dynamic, big-time playmaker. Anytime you have 
82 catches for over 1,500 yards and you play the caliber competition that he plays uh, up in Chicago, you, you, you're excited about that young man. Yeah, absolutely. His senior season, 79 catches, 1,636 yards, and 26 touchdowns as a senior, ranked 10th in the uh, Illinois High School Association with 3,225 career receiving yards. That's Linnell Billups Williams from University Park, Illinois. Another wide out from Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, and Marist High School, 6'3, 200 pound Ryan Sims. Now, again, different is length is the lead trait and, and tracking the ball and be able to catch the ball. And you just watch Billups, who's going to play the slot and do all the things that slot receivers do. And then you got Ryan Sims, again, from one of the best programs, Marist, uh, a program that year in, year out can compete and win state championships and it run like a college program and really can compete. But you got elite length and you got elite ball skills. Uh, you got a great kid from a great family who's a great program. And, Again, Linnell might have to use his feet to get open. Ryan is going to be open with his size and his catch radius because he can really go get the football. And again, he can run too good for a big guy um, and, and has tremendous upside. Missed some games this year due to injury, nothing major. Otherwise, you know, he had some really good stats this year, but would have had much bigger stats if he hadn't missed a couple games due to injury. Um, but again, big time player that's plays big time competition in the Chicago Catholic League um, and, and has done it against some of the best players in the Midwest. Yeah, 45 catches, 774 yards, and three touchdowns in, the, again, somewhat limited action as a senior and first team all conference honors as a senior as well. That's Ryan Sims from Chicago, Illinois. We go down south to Roswell, Georgia, Blessed Trinity High School for 6'5, 200 pound wide receiver Cole Weaver. Yeah, Cole, Cole's a kid that. Um, Incredible upside. He's six foot five. He can run. He can really go get the ball. He told me when I first started recruiting, he goes, I go, why should I recruit? He goes, you know all those 50-50 balls? I go, yeah. He goes, when they throw them to me, they're about 80-20, coach. <laughs> so very confident. Did not really start playing football seriously till his junior year in high school. So he is behind in his recruitment. He was behind in his playing. Just natural God given he was a basketball player, was going to be a Division One basketball player. Then realized that maybe I should try this football thing a little more seriously. How good a player is naturally, his ability to jump and catch the football, make plays with how limited he plays is absolutely scary. Wonderful kid, wonderful family. Uh, Blessed Trinity is one of the top academic schools in the state of Georgia. Um, again, great program that produces players every year. And uh, we got on him late. We were very fortunate. Uh, Coach Breakin had a had a, had a good relationship with Will Carlton, who was here from the same high school, and actually mm -hmm. Will's parents got involved and got them involved, and um, we, we got him late uh, in December, and, and we're really, really excited about his upside. Yeah, yeah, he was team captain, also earned first team all region, and named a team MVP as a senior, and I know you like those uh, multi-sport athletes, Coach. You mentioned he played basketball, but he also owns the Blessed Trinity uh, record in high jump at 6'4", so uh, you, you, you got a multi-talented athlete there. Yeah, and you got a 6'5 guy that can jump 6'4". Yeah. You're, now you're talking insane catch radius, insane ability. So, again, we can't wait to get to work with him. He is, he is a little bit raw, but like I said, the things he's accomplished with as little as he's played football is pretty, pretty amazing, and, and we, we really think we've got a kid that's going to be special here. St. Louis, Missouri product up next from Parkway North High School, 6'1", 185-pound Q Williams. Yeah, he's, he's, he can do everything. You'll watch his quarterback clips. He, we got him as a wideout. We love him at wideout. He is, he's so slippery at the ball. He's so confident ball, a lot like Linnell. He just never thinks he's going down. He's not even worried when he gets in these crowds. Played quarterback out of necessity. He's a true wideout. He wants to play wideout. He wished, he wished the situation was a little different, but he, he didn't care. He just, he likes to have the ball in his hands. He likes to compete. Um, we had him at camp last year, and it's like he was already committed, and we didn't, he wanted to camp and it was great. And then he, you know, Coach White said, hey, you're, we're not trying to get you hurt. You're, you're already committed to us. And they took like 10 more reps because he kept jumping in because he loves to play so much. Dynamic playmaker. He's got tremendous hands, uh, tremendous body control, explosive athlete. Um, uh, again, he's coming in early. We're going to get him in early, get him yeah. going, rush for 1,200 yards. Uh, catches touchdowns, throws touchdowns, like you name it, he could do it. Um, just, just a dynamic kid from St. Louis. St. Louis has been really good to us, and, and we're really, really excited. We're really excited. 
at a position where we're pretty thin at wide out right now, getting him in here and give him a chance to compete to get on the field right away. Yeah, that's one of those kids. Uh, we talk about the, the Swiss Army knives of the offense and defense, really a kid that can do everything for the team as they come in. Uh, that's Q Williams from St. Louis, Missouri. And one running back in this year's class, Coach, St. Louis, Missouri product, six foot, 220 pound, Janarius Jackson. Yeah, Janarius, really, really big, strong, physical back. Um, North and South guy, but also has excellent speed, as you'll see here, and, and plays really high competition down in Georgia. Um, awesome kid, uh, been through some different things, um, always comes out on top, and uh, again, you'll see his physicality running the football. Besides Kenny Tracy, we don't have a big back that in our, in our program right now that we feel like can go and do it do it every single down. And this is so we're looking for that 210 pound kid that can grow to 220, 225, and we really believe this kid has it. And again, don't sleep on his speed. Even though he's a power back, he he's a fast, and he also has very nice hands uh, out of the backfield. He's caught a number of screen passes and things. So, uh, really, really special athlete, special kid. We. Coach Connor and him have a tremendous relationship. He had some power five offers late in the game uh, and, and stuck with Miami based on him and Coach Connor's relationship. And again, could have went easily to the Big Ten or some other places mm -hmm. uh, late that jumped in, you know, jumped in in the last month and just said, hey, you guys have been with me. So uh, Coach Connor did a great job and a huge, huge upside there. And we're really excited to get him in our program. That's Janarius Jackson, uh, the latest uh, athlete to sign a letter of intent to attend Miami University. We come back, we'll talk about the offensive players that we've told you about a little bit and talk about their impact perhaps on the 2023 Miami Red Hawks. That's coming up next here on our 2022 National Signing Day Special. Stay with us. Miami basketball opens the new year strong with our one Miami weekend doubleheader on Saturday, January 7th, 2023. The women's basketball team will get us started at 1 p.m. against Akron for their first home Mid-American Conference game. The men's basketball team will follow with their first home game of the new year against Mid-American Conference foe Kent State at 3.30 or 30 minutes after the conclusion of the women's game. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. Miami faculty and staff keep an eye out for special deals as this event approaches. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And welcome back into our Yeager Stadium studio as we continue with the 2022 National Signing Day Special for the Miami Red Hawks. And uh, Steve Baker, head coach Chuck Martin, back with you. We just introduced you to all of the uh, offensive signees. And coach, uh, let's kind of go back and, and, you know, when you're recruiting these guys, you talked earlier about the five-year plan or the long-term plan. Uh, I would imagine a lot of these guys fit into that plan, building depth and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, where do you see these guys all kind of fitting into the system as you go forward with, with uh, what, four of the guys we talked about being early signees? Yeah, we're a little different. We're still trying to figure it out. But we, you know, our first seven, eight years here, we just basically recruited high school kids. Yeah. We, had a, we had a couple transfers, but you're talking about one transfer every two or three years. We didn't have many transfers. Right. And we built it with high school kids. We felt like that was our niche. The, the academics at Miami, the type of kids you can attract to from the type of family you attract, like, there's a lot to sell in Miami. Then the portal comes, and then all of a sudden you you can't just say, well, I'm not going to recruit any transfers because, right. like I said, a year ago, we all of a sudden had a huge need at defensive end. You had to bring it somewhere. We didn't have right. bodies to play football season. Um, so for us, our base is still going to be the guy, the heart and soul of our team is still going to be these high school kids, these kids that come here and play here for three, four, five years. Um, yeah, and, and you're going to recruit some great ones, and maybe a couple of them you do lose. But it was like, well, you don't want to recruit great players because you're going to lose them portal. Like, Okay, we have lost. You yeah. know, the last two years, there's four kids that we've lost that I didn't want to lose. Right. That's four kids out of my whole team. There's a lot of returners that are great players that could Ready have, to step up. Yeah. you know, that give me a constant update of the schools that have contacted them illegally to try to get them to leave, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're staying, and they're great players. So not every great player leaves. Some great player realizes like Miami's a great place. This this football program is a great program. I'm in a great place. I'm doing all the things I want to do. I'm the main guy. I'm not just going to go uh, see if the grass is green or someplace else. So um, these guys are going to be the heart and soul of our football team. These kids that we bring in, they're going to be the future captains. They're going to be 
Um, our, our bloodline's always going to be these high school kids. So some of the positions, I think we talked about wide out, like we mm -hmm. have a need. There's going to be some young yeah. kids. I don't know if it's going to be Corin Williams or some other young guy, mm -hmm. but there's going to be some opportunities for some guys to get in the mix right away. Mm -hmm. Other positions, maybe we have some returners, and you say, okay, well, it's going to be hard to beat Matt Salopek out at Will Backer. Right. You know, it's going to be hard to beat Austin Erdl out at Nose Guard. But so it's, a lot of it doesn't even have to do with the high school kids' ability. They just come in, and there's a guy that they're going to have to wait a year or so to maybe – become that guy for us so it just depends on the position but these guys will be the heart and soul of miami football for the next four or five well years. And, and i mean quite honestly uh looking back on this season with with the meat grinder that it was and the injuries these guys some of these guys are a play away from being in there and ready to go anyway i mean yes. you go back to austin Earl and you know the iowa game you just basically said he, you're a freshman that's their best defensive yeah. lineman and uh guess what he's he's first team all big 10 and you've yeah. got to block him yeah so, you know, and again, some kids get pushed into action. Oh, that's right. I would say you came here to play. Yeah. So the day you walk in the door, you start getting ready to play. You came here to win a job. So it don't matter if there's a senior starter. Have you come here, compete, and try to beat them out. It's, it's happened before. Whether, whether you can or not, it, it, it does happen. Or the kid gets injured, now you're ready to step up. And a guy, like I was talking about the Quez Warrens or the Ryan McWoods. Yeah. Ryan McWood got an opportunity at Northern Illinois in 2018. Yeah. I didn't know how that was going to go. That might have been his only game he started his whole career. Right. He played tremendously in that game and never looked back. Never looked Became back. the cornerstone to our football team, the cornerstone of our defense, the leader of our program. Quez Warren got thrown in the fourth quarter of Central Michigan a year ago. Yeah. We're down fourth quarter at home against Central in our conference over. Quez gets thrown in. I don't know. Yeah. He's never. So when your opportunity comes in Division One football or in life, you better be ready for the opportunity. The guys that are ready are the guys that don't look back. Quez, Quez wanted to be a four-year starter here. Yeah. You know? And because when, when his opportunity came, he took advantage of it. Other kids get those, that little opportunity. The, the opportunity is not five games. Right. The opportunity might be five plays. Yeah. You know? And there's another kid that went in that game ahead of Quez because I thought that kid was better than Quez. Mm -hmm. He played one play. Yeah. It was not a good play. We threw Quez in the next play. Quez never came out. Never came out. So right. I wasn't yeah. right on my initial call. I gave the wrong kid the first opportunity. Right. Yeah. Let's uh, talk a little bit about comparisons in class because we talk, you know, there's, there's less high school recruits being committed. Uh, you know, recruited uh, because of the portal, but uh, compare like last year to this year. I'm, I I always look at the big guys, and I'm looking at six 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 eight up front. And we talk about you know schools being run, high schools being run, pretty much like college programs with weight rooms and training and everything else. These kids are coming in ready to go physically. Yeah, and then again, they're getting bigger, stronger, and faster. Oh yeah, every year and again. We brought in a great online class last year. They were down oh, yeah. on scout team. One of them was with the varsity guys, but the other three are on scout team, and they did a tremendous job. So every year it just seems like at every level of sports, you watch youth sports. I was talking to uh, somebody the other day, he's coaching eighth grade basketball. He says, every team we play has somebody that can dunk. I don't know the way it was when I was in eighth grade. No, There's no. A, all of a sudden you heard about the kid two towns over that could dunk. He couldn't wait to see it, you yeah, know? Yeah, right. He's like, every team has a guy that can dunk. Some teams have more, you know? So just... As generations go, as we know, yeah. everybody gets bigger, stronger, bigger, faster, stronger, and, faster right. and, and, and college football, and, and particularly these big guys. And then they just train differently. There's more high school kids that are getting trained like college kids, whether it be at the high school because the program is run like a college program or whether it's a personal trainer. There's just more resources spent. Uh, so they're, they're ahead. They're more knowledgeable than, than we've ever been before. As you look at this class, Coach, with the offensive linemen, wide receivers, and running back, as you look toward 2023, what else are you looking for in pieces, whether it's in the portal or perhaps a late recruit? Yeah, well, the thing I'm most excited about is our nucleus coming back. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with oh, you, yeah. we, we lost two defensive guys, Yeah. you know, and we're getting some really good ones back from injury. So, yeah. um, obviously, you lose McWood. You lost John Saunders in the portal. John Saunders is a great player for us. So, that's it. Everyone else in our – entire defense is back mm -hmm. and a lot of them were first year starters yeah so yeah. a lot of them now are going to go into their second year yeah and in in they played really good in their first year better than i thought some of them could play in their first year and Caden Wollen's going to year two and Corey Sutton's going to year two and Ty Wise is going to year yeah. two and Brian Uga is going to year two and Frizz McKee like all these guys are going to take a huge jump if if they put the work in which they yeah. will um offensively obviously you lose uh one offense alignment and you lose Jay Walk and hip and yeah. you got everybody else back yeah and and we went through a lot. You lose your starting quarterback. Uh, I always say reference all the other teams that lost their starting quarterback oh. and look look what happened to them yeah. versus what 
we could have won all eight conference games. Yeah. We were in every one of them, you know, and, and, and had an opportunity. Um, and you think of all the guys we didn't have and all the guys that were out at key positions and they're coming back and you have. So the thing I'm always like the nucleus of our team we have in we had a good season. We didn't have the season we want to have. We didn't have a terrible season. We, we, but when you look at who we played, and then you look at the things we did, like, do we have to get the turnovers right? No, we got to keep doing the turnover. Like, we got to yeah. keep taking care of the football, and we got to keep creating turnovers. Like, that's we, we're doing it. We got to get our special teams right. No, our special teams is locked and loaded. It should even be right. better next year, you know? Yeah. Our defense should be better next year because, one, you got nine stars back. Two, a lot of those guys were really young this year. They're not a finished product. Then you now offensively, you, you, you have some things that we know we got to get corrected over there and we're going to get corrected over there, but you got a, you got a good nucleus come back. You know, we're looking to add wideouts. We added some of this freshman yep. class. We'll probably add, add, we've added one in the portal already. We probably add one more in the portal, but, uh, and then any great player that can make a difference. Yep. Whenever, you know, we're, but we don't have a lot of glaring holes. Like holes last year, we were like, yeah. oh my God, we just lost our top four DNs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got some work to do. We got to find a couple of DNs. Just to, right. just to manage the roster. We don't have enough DNs to get through a season. Right. Uh, so um, that's where we're at. And, and again, we're gonna we're gonna look to add the same thing as I said. There's a there's a negative at times stigma with transfers. Well, mm-hmm. what's the matter with them? Like, mm-hmm. well, if you met our transfers yeah. we brought in, oh, they're great. There's, kids. there's nothing matter with anyone. No, no. They're wonderful people from wonderful families yeah. who, for whatever reason, we're looking for a different home. And it was a different reason for every kid. Yeah. And we recruit them just like we recruit the high school kids because one or two years ago they were high school kids. Right. Will they fit in at Miami? Yeah. Will they be successful as a student at Miami? Will they be successful as a person at Miami? Mm-hmm. Will they fit into the high character that we expect out of all our student athletes at Miami? Mm-hmm. And, and make sure that we bring, and again, it's an inexact science, sometimes you're wrong, but right. we, we brought in those kids last year and they not only helped us win games and perform at a high level, but they also did well in the classroom and they also have been great socially. So that's, that's the goal every year. We don't view the transfer any different. Some people don't care. He's just a good player. If he's catch player. a ball, yeah. we're going to bring him in. We're yeah. not doing that. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking with head coach Chuck Martin here on our National Signing Day special. We will continue to reveal the uh, class of uh, 2022 in just a moment. We'll go to the defensive side and start with the linebackers when we come back in just one moment. Miami Hockey returns to the ice at Steve Coach Katie Arena in the Goggin Ice Center on Friday, December 30th to begin a weekend series with Niagara. This Friday night game will have a puck drop of 7.05 p.m., while the Saturday game will have a special 4.05 p.m. start time. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. We can't wait to ring in the new year with you at Goggin Ice Center. The Miami men's basketball team will continue Mid-American Conference play against Buffalo Tuesday, January 10th. Tip-off will be at 7 p.m. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And welcome back in. We are live here on MiamiRedHawks.com. Happy to have you with us here today as we reveal the uh, new class of Red Hawks signing their national letter of intent to attend Miami University and play football for the Red Hawks in the 2023 season. Move to the linebacking position and two linebackers signing their national letter of intent today as head coach Chuck Martin rejoins us. And let's start with the Snellville, Georgia product, Brookwood High School, 6'1", 225-pound linebacker, Malcolm McCain. Malcolm, two-time team captain, plays really high-level football down in Georgia. North and south run and hit guy, great run stopper, great blitzer, good in the pass game, can really run, loves to play explosive explosive everything he hits disintegrates um really really excited him comes great program great coach great family um checks every box you're looking for again obviously you always have the adjustment from high school to college but uh a guy that's made big time plays in, in a lot of huge games they you know they went out to they went out to vegas and played bishop gorman that's the type of program yeah. they had. so they they play the best of the best and he's he's performed at a very high level uh for his junior and senior year. And, and again, natural leader, obviously two-time captain, a guy that'll be a vocal leader, be a leader by example, 
and, and will play all over the field, north and south, and run and hit people. So, again, uh, we feel good about the linebackers. We, you know, we, we've got a couple in this class that, that we, we absolutely love. Coach Bowen did a phenomenal job recruiting. There's a bunch of other ones that we love that probably we could have got. We just can only have so many linebackers on a, in our program. But, again, these are also guys that are huge on ST for us. Right. Uh, so it's, it's very excited about Malcolm and, and getting him come up from Georgia. Yeah, great stats. 129 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, 8 sacks, and 4 forced fumbles just as a senior at Brookwood High School. Uh, that earned him first team all region honors down at Snellville, Georgia. The other linebacker to sign their national letter of intent uh, from Homewood Flossmoor High School in Homewood, Illinois, six foot, 215 pound Christian McKinney. Yeah, Christian's from HF High School. Again, another crazy athlete, uh, explosive, uh, dynamic leader, vocal leader, dynamic leader from, uh, you know, He's talking to his high school coach. It's like if he's not on the field, it's just different. He makes everyone step and fetch. He makes everyone around him better. He makes everyone make sure they know what they're doing. And then he's, you know, I've seen him dunk a basketball any way you want. Um, and just, just an incredibly, incredibly explosive guy. HF, one of the top programs in the state of Illinois, um, team that's apparently has a chance to make deep, deep playoff runs. So they, they play a lot, a lot of high competition every week. And he's been a tremendous football player for them. So we're really excited about uh, the two guys Coach Bowen brought in. And again, out of a list of a lot of other good ones that we could have brought in, just unfortunately, we had to tell a couple guys no that we really love uh, just because we, we have enough depth at backer that we felt like this, this, this was the right number to bring in this year. But Christian and Malcolm, They'll be running hit guys. They'll be ST guys. They'll be guys that can be captains at Miami someday. Well, and that's that's I know one of the qualities that that I love about a linebacker is the fact, and you know I can go back a long ways to guy like guys like Kurt McMillan in the '80s uh, that just will play side to side. I mean, from one sideline to the other, and love to go hit people. Just just to go find the football and hit people. And I know that's qualities you look for. Yeah, no doubt. And again. Obviously, with McWood and Salopec this year, we oh. had so much production out of those two spots. And obviously, with McWood leaving, there's an opportunity for somebody to step up. And it's nice to get Oscar McWood in late in the year, and he showed what kind of player oh, he's going to be for. So um, we've got a great linebacker room. A lot of those guys do so much on the special team with Nardone and Cam Rogers. So um, it, it's a great room right now. It's, it's, it's the heart and soul of our football team, and we're adding two young guys that we think are going to fit in and, and, and just, just compliment everybody in that room. Yeah, Christian McKinney, by the way, all team, uh, all first team, all conference as a senior and was a team captain for Terrell Alexander at HF High School in Homewood, Illinois. We'll come back, take a look at defensive specialists when we return in our 2022 National Signing Day special in just one moment. Stay with us. The Miami men's basketball team will continue Mid-American Conference play against Buffalo Tuesday, January 10th. Tip-off will be at 7 p.m. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. The Miami women's basketball team will host Mid-American Conference rival Kent State on Wednesday, January 11th. Tip-off will be at 7 p.m. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. Continuing on on our 2022 National Signing Day special for Miami football, I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Looking forward to seeing the athletes that we are talking about uh, making their appearance uh, at Jaeger Stadium. Some of them early enrollees. They'll be involved in spring practice. Uh, uh, most of them will be uh, on campus in the fall and uh, ready to go for the 2023 campaign. Head coach Chuck Martin rejoins us. and. Defensive skill position, the secondary. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, three different athletes back there. That uh, again, that that was one of the areas that was maybe hardest hit by injury at times this season. So you're looking for some guys I know to to really come in and and maybe work their way into the depth chart. Yeah, no, there's definitely some opportunities. We have a lot of safety nickels types who are a little thin at corner right now. Um, so a young guy at corner could definitely come in and and compete for, for playing time, certainly compete for depth. 
Um, so yeah, no, it's, it, we get, we get next three guys we're talking about are all really good cover guys. So we're really excited that they're coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Let's head down to Hopkinsville, Kentucky for our first signee, 5'11", 178 pound defensive back, Deshaun Mercer. Yeah, phenomenal athlete, incredible basketball player. I mean, incredible basketball. He can 25, 30, 38, he can, he can light it up and he can really play. Um, both sides of the ball in football, he plays safety, he plays corner, he run and hit you, he can get interceptions. They throw the ball on offense. He's always he just he's he's a really good athlete, a really good player. We we are really excited about him. Um, he, in my opinion, he was under recruited. Uh, we loved him. I kept saying, why why does he not have more activity? And then we convinced him that we were the smart ones. We knew he was a great player. So he he just does everything. Any anywhere you put him on an athletic field, offense or defense in football, you put him anywhere in the basketball court. He just he's a very very naturally gifted athlete that has great ball skills. But here you see him duck the block and make a TFL. It's things you can't coach. He's the force player. He just has natural feel to go underneath that block and go make the play. So um, dynamic athlete, great kid, great family. Uh, really, really excited to get him up here. And like you said, it is a position where we are a little thinner right now, the cornerback position. Uh, new era, Kentucky new era player of the year as a junior. Owns the school record for career interceptions as well. First team all state in Kentucky as a junior and a senior. That's Deshaun Mercer of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Another early enrollee from Pittsburgh, Pen Pennsylvania, Penn Hills High School, six foot, 170 pound Rayon Strader. Love his length, love his confidence, love his ball skills. Uh, plays DB, um, looking looking to get the ball back to the offense. He's not he's not trying to cover it and hope it's incomplete. A lot of DBs are hoping it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. Other DBs are trying, and then there's other guys like Rayon who, when the ball's in there, he is going to make the play on the ball, and he's very naturally gifted, and with the ball in the air. So uh, definitely playmaker mentality, playmaker confidence, playmaker ability. Then he has great length. Uh, will continue to develop his strength and, and, and his size and his, his speed will continue to get better and better. Um, so not dissimilar to John. John was a kid, Saunders coming out of high school, was kind of longer, not super fast, got in our strength program, developed, you know, developed enough in three years, his speed and everything that he's getting SEC offers, a kid that couldn't get any 1A offers out of high school, comes to our program, gets developed in our program and ends up playing SEC football. So. Uh, very similar kid as far as he, he has a lot of ability right now and the things that he needs to get developed, we're going to help him develop. And I know he's going to do the work because he loves the game. Yeah, absolutely. Named first team all conference as a junior and senior and a two-time team captain for Penn Hill Senior High School. That is Rayon Strader. And again, an early enrollee. He'll be involved in spring ball uh, in just a couple of months and uh, get that leg up on all the other class. And uh, one other defensive back from Belleville, Michigan and Belleville High School, 6'2", 185 pound, Michael Yarbrough. Yeah, corner rover for us. He's a field safety, he's a corner, plays offense, won the state title at Belleville this year. Um, really good ball skills, great length, great athleticism, great family, great program. All the things we're looking for, checks all these boxes. We definitely think he has the size and hitting ability to go play safety, but we also think he has the cover ability to cover wideouts. Um, so he gives us, when you talk about those Swiss Army knives, our, our field safety and our corners are kind of, kind of one intertwined together, and you just see his length and his speed. And again, made some big plays on offense on their way to the state title, made tons of big plays on defense, um, and I love his versatility. And again, has great, great body to fill into. He's going to be a grown, grown man here in a, in a couple of years. Yeah. So he's going to definitely look the part. Michigan, uh, Belleville, Michigan product. Uh, Always great football in Michigan. He was first team all state as a senior, first team all conference, first team all upper Midwest in that same season. And as a senior, recorded 50 tackles, three interceptions, and two pick six touchdowns in this past season. That is Michael Yarbrough of Belleville, Michigan. And that is the defensive skill position, the defensive backs uh, for the Red Hawks signing their national letter of intent to attend Miami University. We will come back and finish out our athletes. We'll talk about the defensive line in just one moment. Stay with us. Fans, you don't want to miss any Red Hawk action this season. Miami men's basketball returns to the Millette Hall floor tomorrow, December 22nd at 7 p.m. as they take on in-state rival Wright State. 
Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. We can't wait to see you there. Miami Hockey returns to the ice at Steve Coach Katie Arena in the Goggin Ice Center on Friday, December 30th to begin a weekend series with Niagara. This Friday night game will have a puck drop of 7.05 p.m., while the Saturday game will have a special 4.05 p.m. start time. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. We can't wait to ring in the new year with you at Goggin Ice Center. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And we welcome you back into our 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special, revealing the class of signees for the 2023 class of uh, new incoming uh, players. Some of those have, will begin here in uh, the fall, the spring of this semester and uh, this year, and uh, most will enter in the fall and be a part of the 2023 Red Hawks. One uh, position group still to talk about, a couple of athletes from the defensive line signing their national letter of intent. And uh, we saw how impactful the D-line is and going to have, having to go get DNs and that sort of thing. When you're looking at the guys that you brought in for defensive line coach, what were the skills that you were looking for from those guys? Yeah, you were just looking for, if you're looking at an inside guy, you're looking for a guy that's going to be a run stopper for sure and can, can be violent with his hands. If you're looking for an edge guy, you're always looking for guys in rushing quarterback because right. at the end of the day, um, if you get the other team to third down, you got to get after the quarterback. If you get after the quarterback, um, life's a lot easier on the back end. So you're always looking for athletic kids. And then obviously toughness and physicality. So um, we, we got a couple in this class we're, we're very excited about um, that, that are more edge guys. Yeah. Um, obviously, we have all our inside guys back, um, yeah. so uh, we're, we're excited about these two kids that we got coming in. Yeah, we'll head up to Barberton, Ohio. Great program, Barberton High School. 6'2", 225-pound, Roosevelt Andrews the third. Yeah, North, Northeast Ohio football, physical. He has 38 sacks his last two seasons. Uh, like a Doug Costin, really gifted athlete. Uh, play some running back for him, plays tight end for him, has got great hands. You you know, he, he's an athlete playing D-line like I used to always talk about Costin. Costin's not D-line, but Costin's an athlete that happens to be big enough to play D-line. Tremendously athletic, physical, violent, um, 44 pins in wrestling last year as a mm. junior, uh, physically dominant on the mat in wrestling at a, at a, at a, at a very tough weight class, um, but just all over the field, just makes plays and forces fumbles and gets sacks. and. And, and scores on offense and knocks the daylights out of people. So really, really excited, you know, Northeast Ohio, a lot of tough, tough football up in that area. Barberton High School, very, very tough program, uh, very physical program. And then you got a special athlete on top of all that. So really excited about him uh, and, and what he brings to the table, physicality. And then love the wrestlers because their hand strength is so amazing. Yeah. Uh, don't, no, don't necessarily like it on the perimeter because I like to have more basketball guys the right. that are used to running and catching balls yeah but the linebackers d-line and o-line the kids that wrestlers are you know you see on that tape how quickly he gets out well how does he do that because he's a wrestler he's those yeah. guys that haven't wrestled do not have his hand strength or hand quickness um so it's a huge advantage particularly when it comes to blocking people or pass rushing and obviously like i said 38 sacks and 44 pins and uh, he's done a lot of amazing things already and we're really excited to get him yeah absolutely a two-time uh, team captain for Barberton High School as well, and had 21 sacks in the loan in the season of 2021. That's Roosevelt Andrews III from Barberton, Ohio. And one other signee to tell you about, from Newman, Georgia, and Trinity Christian High School, 6'2", 220-pound, Ethan McDowell. Yeah, speed guy, uh, amazing young man, amazing family, great program, great leader, will be He'll make his impact on Miami University, not just Miami University football. He's a guy that a lot of people on this campus will get to know and love um, and is going to grow into his long frame. He's got good length. He's really, really, really twitchy and fast. He he's, doesn't have a ton of weight on him right now, but you see him running like a linebacker. We're going to take his 220-pound frame and make him 250, and he's going to be running, chasing down quarterbacks here. And he, He's going to do everything right and play the game the right way. 
because uh, he does everything right in his life. So we're, we're really excited about Ethan. Another guy that was already committed came to camp, and we were trying to get him like, hey, you know, get a couple reps, work with Coach Burton. He just wanted to keep going and going and going and going. He's like, I'm trying to get better, Coach. I'm trying to get better. So uh, Ben been through a lot in his life. Uh, has had some major obstacles that him and his family have overcome. Tremendous, tremendous people. Uh, people that, that give you great perspective and, and, and make you make you not uh, complain about your days with some of the things that they've been through. Uh, that was no, no fault. They just, you know, sometimes bad things happen in life and they've been through some stuff and really proud to get to know him and his family. It's been a joy and we're really, we're really excited about Ed and Ethan. Yeah, he had 50 tackles and seven sacks as a senior earning first team all region and also uh, all, all team, first team all regions as a junior as well. Team captain for Trinity Christian, that's Ethan McDowell, uh, our final signee to tell you about, but a lot more to come here on the show in just a bit. Uh, we'll talk about our defensive signees and where they fit into the puzzle. That is the 2023 Red Hawks, and then we'll finish out the show, kind of taking look a, a look back at the Bahamas Bowl and the 2022 season, and then a look ahead to the 2023 season as well. It's all straight ahead here on MiamiRedHawks.com. Stay with us. Miami men's basketball returns after the holidays on Thursday, December 29th at 7 p.m. as they host St. Mary of the Woods on the Millette Hall Hardwood. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. Miami women's basketball makes their return to Millette Hall on Saturday, December 31st at noon as they host Tiffin University. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. We look forward to seeing you back in Millette Hall. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And we are back. Happy to have you with us on MiamiRedHawks.com. Steve Baker, along with head coach Chuck Martin, we've introduced you to the 16 athletes signing their national letter of intent to attend Miami University and uh, be a part of the 2023 Red Hawks. And defensively, coach, you know, we, we, we talked about replacing seniors, replacing players on the portal, and, you know, how players fit in and that sort of thing. But if nothing else, and Northern Illinois can attest to this this year, I think they had 42 different players start a game for them this season, and we weren't far behind them in terms of injuries. That's, that's just the one thing you can't account for, and that, that's the need for quality depth. And uh, it looks like, if nothing else, We've got a lot of quality depth in these 16 players here. Yeah, no, we're excited about this group. It's just the same thing as you build your program. What, who are we as coaches? What do we believe in? Are we bringing in kids that are going to fit into what we believe in? With the day of the transfer portal, you better. Because yeah. there's still going to be good kids that are happy that get in the portal. If they're not happy, they're definitely getting it. If they don't like where you're at, there's most of the Miami kids that have gotten the portal the last couple of years. Like, I still talk to Cam Butler. I yeah. still talk to Ivan Pace. Like, they didn't have bad experience here. They maybe, and there's even other kids that were transferring maybe down to try to find a home to play that I still. Yeah. The, the second piece is you want to recruit in the name, name, image, and likeness of your school, which we've done a tremendous job during our nine years here is like kids that fit into Miami. Right. Our kids get their degree. Yeah. You know, we just went through our academics. We got five kids out of 105 that we got to do some work um, to make sure that they're where they need to be. And they're, you know, and it's not major work. It's, right. it's, it's they got to redo one class, you know, and again, in, in the likeness of your school, we recruit student athletes at Miami. Not everybody does that. Some people, right. and again, especially at the portal, it's just hired guns and win now. And coaches are trying to win and move on. Yeah. And, and that's what they do. All right. Yeah. And that's not who we've been, obviously, um, going into my 10th season next right. year at Miami. Th it, this isn't win at all costs, no matter who you bring. No, we're going to bring in guys that represent ourselves and our families and what we believe in and do stuff the right way. And we always talk about the, the path of football versus life after football right. and looking for kids that want both yeah. and are willing, willing to sacrifice to be great at both. And it's hard. Yeah. It's hard enough to be a Division One football player. It's hard enough to be a student at Miami University. Yeah. Like those, are, those are great, great challenges. Now you put the two together, it's, it's a yeah. daunting challenge. And we're looking for kids. And then we're looking for kids that, again, why, why when things don't go our way and maybe we have some injuries, why are kids, I always like, 
why they don't wilt, why they keep playing, why they never give up. It's because of who they are, yeah. and it's who we are. And again, like I said, this year was incredibly frustrating because if we stay healthy, we're probably nine and three minimally. Yeah. Um, when you look at the games and you look at all the things we did, if we just could score a few more points, we need to score a lot of points. Just right. if we score in the mid twenties, we win every game. Yeah. Um, and it was frustrating because we didn't get where we wanted to go, and we have high goals. You know, since we got this thing turned around year three, our goal is the same every year. Conversely, that we didn't fall apart, even though there right. was numerous times where we could have turned our back on each other, we could have stopped competing right down to the last six minutes of ball. Say, our guys are never going to go away. They're never. And the strength of our program is our consistency. Again, we're 34 and 16 in our last 50 MAC games, yeah. which is still the best record in the league over the last seven years. And we've become the consistent team that, okay, Miami does it year in year. Part of it is because we've had coaching consistency. Yeah. Part of the other reasons everyone else is such up and down is because there's there's been a lot of coaches come and gone in this league and a lot of assistant coaches sure. since, since I've, since I've gotten here. So, and then you look at, you know, what happened, you know, a team in our league lost their coach. He went, he went to be an offensive coordinator somewhere and their whole team is gone. Yeah. You know, in this league, it's hard enough to keep your good players. If you have a coaching transition, you're going to be yeah. gutted. Like yeah. you're going to be gutted. You're going to, you're going to be a transfer school. Like, yeah. cause you talk about like their top 10 players. You got to rebuild the play. Right. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. starting, you're now going to be starting back where I started for like, you don't have, you know, so, um, consistency and then recruiting quality kids like is in this class. That's more kids stay than go. Everybody like, yeah. oh, there's 1,900 kids in a transfer portal. I got it, but there's how also, many athletes there's are also, there out there? There's yeah. also 90,000 not in the transfer yeah. portal. Mm -hmm. So, and then you look at who helps us win. Yeah, we had some transfers come in and do wonderful things for us this year. Mm -hmm. But the Ryan McWoods and the Matt Salbacks, the Austin Earls and the Rusty Fests, like yeah. those are the cornerstones of your program. That's the guys that you got. They're all Midwest kids that you got from Akron Hoban and, and Cincinnati, yeah. Cincinnati Colerain, and you went up to Wisconsin to grab a kid, and, and you're like, you went up to Brother Rice in Michigan, and those are the kids that will always be the cornerstone of our program and the heart and soul program. And yes, we're going to have to add, and we always want to add, right. add high-end players, and if there's a difference maker, no one's turned down a difference maker, but our recruiting, our high school recruiting is still the bloodline of our program will always be. Well, and you talk about the cornerstones, Coach, and quite honestly, I've had a chance to talk to almost all of the transfer students you know, over the past year and a lot of the other athletes and you you mentioned the cornerstones you know at a lot of schools the transfer comes in and says okay well i'm the big transfer i'm the, I'm, I'm the big man on campus these guys all will point to a rusty feth or a ryan mcwood or somebody else and say no the reason i'm playing the way i am is because these guys are showing me and, and getting me in the system and you don't see that a lot of places. No. And again, they don't get a lot of help a lot of places. Right, you're exactly. The hired, you're right? the hired gun. No one even talks to you. That, right. Like Austin Earl took all those guys under his wing. Austin Earl all of a sudden was the young guy with Cam and Lonnie and, and Kempler and Dom Robinson. And like, yeah. And all of a sudden he looks in the room and it's like, it's him. There, there's Kobe <laughs> Hilton. There's Kobe Hilton. Yeah. And then Willard and Marlin yeah. and Ugu and all like, and who are these guys? And, yeah. and he got them all with, obviously Coach Burton did a tremendous job sure. and Coach Bregan did a tremendous job, but he got them all by, like, this is how we play D-line. Yeah. Like, this is who we are. And again, it was a struggle. It wasn't like they all came here just, right. but exactly. they've all figured out that we're going to do this together. And we're, we're unrelenting in our approach of we're going to play together. Yeah. We're going to play together. We're going to help each other. We're going to support each other. And it's hard. It's yeah. hard. It's harder now when you have more roster transitions, but we tell kids, whether they're high school kids or transfers, like you're not, everybody says it, but then some places they are bigger than the team. Right. Exactly. I, I, I'm promised this or like, they're not promised anything. They're promised an opportunity like everybody else. And if they're the best guy, they're going to get to play. You know, and, and w the other thing that you talked about, and then, and then we'll move on and, and look back at the year a little bit in our next segment, but you talked about bringing in my, the mirror of the school and, you know, in talking to the student athletes, you know, I mean, let's face it, every athlete that comes to play football at any Division I school is, the goal is the NFL. But you talk to the guys at Miami and, you know, they literally will do this. It's like, well, I'd, I'd really like to go to the NFL. I'd like to, to play, whether it's the NFL or wherever. But if I don't, I've got this, which is a Miami degree. And for each of our athletes that we talk to, whether it's on Hawk Talk or a pregame show or whatever, to have that already in mind is, is something that I, I think, I don't know if it's rare, but it's certainly something to a man on this football team, I tell you, that they all have in mind. Yeah, well, it is because that's how we recruit them. Right. They don't all have in mind a 
in high school. Right. When they're recruited by our staff and by me, they're, it's, it's brought up constantly. Like, this right. is what we're looking for. We're looking for the best students and the best athletes in the country. And it's not for everyone. Right. And we do lose some talented kids because of that, that are not looking for the academic piece. But my, my point, there's going to be life after football. We've been on an incredible run. You know, we had five kids in NFL camps. We have three kids on active rosters right now. Like, we, we, are, we are producing NFL players on a yearly basis, so it's becoming even more. When I first got here, we had right. no NFL players. Exactly, right. And then it's like now every single year, and, and last year was the best year we had, that you're going to have these opportunities. I, I looked at the, the, the highlight film of the 19 championship team, and there's about 16 guys on that team mm -hmm. that played in that game that will at least have been in an NFL camp, whether they made it or made not. Made it or they, not, they, right. Yeah. That's, that's an incredible number from a Mac school. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do. But on the other hand, it's Miami University. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to put yourself in a position to be successful for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And we don't even measure success about money. We know that the engineers right. and a lot of the farmers' kids and some of our pre-med, pre-law kids are probably going to make a lot of money. Right. And when they do, we'll ask them for a donation. There you go. Like, we have no <laughs> you gotta but we back. also know that there's other majors that, hey, they're, you're not going to be necessarily a millionaire you're going to be but you can be one of the best high school or grade school teachers in america with the miami education so it's preparing for life after football and being really well prepared to be the best of whatever you choose you want to do mm -hmm. and, and again miami university that's who they are and that's we've bought into that i think hopefully that's part of the reason they hired me nine years ago yeah. um, but that's that's who we are and, and we've proven going from four and 26 and mac play to 34 and 16 that you can do both yeah you can be the elite program in the league and have the best record in the league over a seven-year span and still keep producing these people going out into the real world really well prepared that are going to make a difference for the rest of their life. And it, it, it's a lofty goal, but it's yeah. a place you can do it, and we've taken advantage. You know, when they get here and they see the academics and they meet the teachers and they see the campus and they see the environment, and then not all our kids are perfect, but our kids go to class, our kids turn the work in, our kids study, like... When you yeah. put a kid in that environment, there's a much better chance he will be talking about life after football because yeah. he's surrounded by kids that are thinking about life after football. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just a, a great experience. And that's the, the part of the joy of my job is to be able to talk to some of these student athletes or almost all of the student athletes. And uh, uh, they are some incredible people and incredible human beings. As we continue on our 2022 uh, National Signing Day special. Coach Martin and I will come back. We'll wrap things up here a little bit with a 2022 recap and a look forward to the 2023 season. Miami, of course, coming off a loss to UAB in the uh, hometown lenders Bahamas Bowl. We'll talk about that. Miami, by the way, bowl eligible six out of the last seven seasons. That's something uh, to hang a hat on as well. We'll come back and recap and finish things up in just a moment. Stay with us. Miami basketball opens the new year strong with our one Miami weekend doubleheader on Saturday, January 7th, 2023. The women's basketball team will get us started at 1 p.m. against Akron for their first home Mid-American Conference game. The men's basketball team will follow with their first home game of the new year against Mid-American Conference foe Kent State at 3.30 or 30 minutes after the conclusion of the women's game. Tickets are available for purchase at the Miami Athletic Ticket Office on MiamiRedHawks.com or by calling 513-529-4295 during ticket office business hours. Miami faculty and staff keep an eye out for special deals as this event approaches. Today's 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special is brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. And welcome back to our final segment here of the National Signing Day special for Miami football. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Coming up at 12.15 this afternoon on this very same stream, we're going to leave it open, but at 12.15 this afternoon, Coach Martin will address members of the press and talk about the signing class. 16 athletes signing their national letter of intent to attend Miami University. I think five of them are early enroll enrollees and will be here in January to get a little leg up on uh, everyone else as we head into the fall and coach uh let's <coughs> excuse me let's talk about the bahamas bowl and the trip down to nassau and just as most bowls are and a great experience but uh what an exceptional experience for the miami red hawks last week yeah it was amazing uh I'd like to go there every year and play in that bowl I, you know i tried to get them to shoot this yeah. show down there yeah. and we would have just stayed there but yeah. you know 
It, it, it was amazing. Yeah. They, they, they treat you great. Avery's been in the Bahamas. I've only been there once and was never been to Atlantis. The amount of stuff for everyone involved in the trip to do in Atlantis, like oh. I said, I told the kids before we left, and I didn't really know how true it was going to be. Like, if you can't find a way to have a good time there, you have some major issues. Our, I think everybody that went there had a blast. I, I talked to maybe not everyone, but I tried to talk to as many people as I can, and it was really, really, really every, every parent, every working person, every coach, everybody was just overjoyed with their every, every opportunity they had. And a lot of people got to do and see things that, you know, a lot of our kids never left the country. A lot of people, some yeah. of our kids have never been on a flight before, never saw a stingray, never, never went through a water slide through the sharks. And like yeah. just all the amount of things that they could do and, and enjoy. And all bull trips are great. You know, you mentioned bull eligible six of like, somebody put out the stat, first time we played in back-to-back -back bull games since 0304, since yeah. Roethlisberger left. And I said, the interest, like, we've been bowl eligible since, we've been bowl eligible five years in a row. Right. We, yeah. This could have been our fifth straight bowl game. Yeah. Uh, COVID Knicks won in 2018. We, we, were, we were the team that got left out, even though we were bowl eligible. So the fact that we'd only done it two times since 03 and 04, we could be on our fifth straight bowl right. appearance. Uh, so when I saw that 03, 04, I thought, man, this is pretty good, pretty good deal these kids have been, have been doing. The McWoods have done pretty oh, good yeah. for us. So, yeah. uh, and then... Like we said, frustrating year on some things and some things were out of our control. Some things weren't. We had opportunity to win games, even though we weren't, we didn't have all hands on deck. We're still frustrated. We didn't win some of those games and uh, we're going to work hard to make sure we clean up some things that we need to clean up. Um, but also for the kids that fought and scratch and clawing all the coaches and all the equipment people and all the trainers and all the, all the interviewers <laughs> that worked so hard every day for us it was it was a wonderful it was great for me to walk around and see everybody having a great time, great time. and enjoying yeah. and the weather and then obviously a great great football game we knew you know we were a little bit shorthanded going in but you know we were 11 point underdog which was shocking to me yeah. i was like this should be a pretty fair game i was right there was from start to finish it was it was like a microcosm of season. It was every yard mattered, every, every play every, mattered. Every bit grinded, yeah. Every turnover mattered, every, everything mattered the whole game. And it came down to you play 60 minutes and you're two yards short sure. of where you want to be um, right down to the last seconds of the game. So obviously there was many plays during the game that could have went differently. But um, if we just make an extra point, we're kicking a field goal at the end yeah. of the tie, totally different. So uh, you're, you're, looking at, you're looking at a team that – End of the year, like today, we're never going to give up. They're never going to will. Minute 30 left. They were going to keep fighting, find a way, and they almost found a way to do it one more time, which would have been a wonderful way for the seniors to go out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's, that's the thing that most impressed me about this team, coaching staff, the entire program. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, Brett Gabbard goes down in the Kentucky game, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to win three games maybe. And, you know, but this team never, ever – stopped working, never ever stopped playing as hard as they possibly could. I mean, we talked in going back in the fall camp, the defense seemed to be, okay, that's where we're going to struggle most because of the inexperience in the secondary and that sort of stuff. Number one defense in the MAC. I mean, you know, or they are very close to it. Uh, it. Just continued to play that way all the way through the season and the offense grinding it out every play. Just the heart and tenacity of uh, this team and this program this year, uh, despite the record, is what I will remember most about this season. Yeah, and their willingness to try to figure it out. We had to change gears. We had to become a different team. That's tough to do yeah. in the middle of the season. And our kids' willingness to say, okay, well, this is who we are now. Mm -hmm. And how can we be successful this way? Which is why I always say, look at all the teams that lost their starting quarterback. Yeah. And I'm not, saying all, I'm not yeah. saying all of them failed. Cause, yeah. But, we, you know, we had A.J. Mayer a year ago. is like a little yeah. different, you know. But most of them, it went, it started to go down and then it just, it spiraled out of control because yeah. what happens is you stop scoring as many points. That makes sense Normal. if you don't have yeah. your, your trigger guy. And yeah, you hang in there and you play a couple low scoring games, but that gets old and frustrating in a hurry. And then it just unravels to where you just can't beat anyone because now the defense is frustrated, and the special team's frustrated, and the wideouts are frustrated, and the running, like everybody's frustrated versus, and that's why I give so much credit to A.V. of who he is and how he competed. Mm -hmm. And, like, instantaneous, like, yeah, we're not dead. Like, we're, right. we're going to 
well, this kid's going to compete right down the last play of the last bowl game and how much he improved during the year. And he was a guy our kids could totally rally around um, because they knew no matter what the game looked like or how, how the offense was rolling, he was going to go out there and keep competing. And that led everyone else around that, hey, let's just keep sticking with the plan. Let's keep going. And again, we had some ugly losses and low scoring games that weren't too, too pretty to watch, but we also had some ugly wins in those yeah. low scoring games that weren't too pretty to watch. And um, we're disappointed that we didn't win two or three more um, uh, and put ourselves in even a better position. But uh, like I said, frustrated in many ways because what could have been and then so proud of our organization. I, I just think of all the people that work so hard every day. And I think of, you should have seen the halftime, our medical people, the training staff, oh, gosh, our doctors. Yeah. It was hot. Mm. A lot of guys had played a lot of snaps in the first half, and all of a sudden it's like IV Central. Like it looks like a, a triage Nash unit. unit. Yeah. And, and, uh, and just the feverish and, the, and, and how organized and just it's like giving our kids the best chance to win. Our kids so appreciative of running in there and getting IV to move it. Like, so it's not just the coaches and the players. It's, it's the strength coaches and the equipment people and all they do and the, the trainers and everyone, the academic people, everyone that touches our kids. But it's, it's easy to work hard for our kids because, like you said, you get to talk to all of them and who they are. It, it's, yeah. it's easy to go the extra yard for these guys. Yeah. It's easier to spend more time at your job to try to help these kids be successful. So uh, in so many ways, it was such a rewarding when we found a way to pull out that ball state game. I thought, man, those kids did it again. They just, yeah. they just never go away. It's ugly. It's not pretty, but then, <laughs> you know, so again, we're, we're, we're looking forward to scoring some more points next year yeah. and not, not playing every game the way we did this year, but um, for what they accomplished, very proud of the group. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you mentioned some, you know, some of the areas of the team and the program, but I personally, I, I got to thank, and I know my wife's got to thank, and you know, a lot of people have to thank, uh, the work of Matt Yochus, your football operations yes. director. Uh, you know, just the logistics of getting a party of 215 people uh, to the Bahamas, getting the passports, getting this, getting it all together, putting it all together, make sure everybody's in the right spot, uh, and back uh, and controlling everything he had to control was just amazing. And then getting all the equipment there and down, international shipping containers, and uh, quite honestly, we probably won't see the uniforms until mid-February, but uh, Daryl Hallberg and his staff just did an amazing job. Yeah, and the other piece, too, is just not going internationally. Oh, yeah. You're going internationally. They know nothing about football. <laughs> so, like, when, when, when Yoach in, in particular, but even Daryl, like, when they're trying to explain what we need, they, they can't fathom they what can't we fathom. need. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter from a meal yeah. to a meeting room to, like, it's not like, okay, yeah, we're traveling internationally, but when you get there, they get it. Yeah. Because all the hotels we stay in get it. Get they they it. Yeah, host they teams. Understand. They know when yeah. Yoch says I'm feeding 120, they know it's not 120, you know, third graders. It's right. 120 <laughs> football players. <offensive laughs> you know I mean, so every single thing was getting us there, but then directing the people, like helping the people there do their job because they, they're not trained to do the job to help a football team. Right. They're more than willing. They're wonderful people. Yeah. From the chain game when we – when they, they kick the opening kickoff in the end zone, the ball's on 25, and I just was like, chain games at the 20. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And they weren't moving. They were on the 20 to the 30. It was first and five, you yeah, know, which I was exactly. happy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We had the ball. We had the ball. Like, then I was thinking, when's the last time these guys did, like, this is once, maybe once a year. You know? I, well, that's just it. I got a story for you because we met the guys in the hotel that are with the NCAA or whatever. They had to train these guys no, no, no. day right. of game right. so <laughs> to do that. The, so That adds to the logistics. Oh, and yeah. obviously, I asked Yoch, you know, did you get to do anything in the Bahamas? Because we all had oh, a yeah, great oh, time. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And he said, yeah, I had a little time on Tuesday. But other, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he was... I'm telling you, he was working to make sure everybody else had a great time. So it it was wonderful. They did an incredible job. Well, Coach, we thank you so much for taking the time. As always, uh, it's always fun to to talk with you, especially uh, on days like this where uh, most everything's pretty happy because uh, all of these guys are coming in and uh, we'll be uh, gung ho and ready to contribute to Miami football in the fall. Thanks. Thanks. Head coach Chuck Martin joining us, and that will do it for today. Uh, At least this part of the show, the 2022 National Signing Day Special. We thank you for tuning in. And again, coming up at 12.15, a little less than an hour from now, 
at 1215. Just click on the same stream. It will still be active. And head coach Chuck Martin will talk with members of the media. His uh, annual uh, National Signing Day press conference will be at 1215 this afternoon. Until then, I'm Steve Baker. Thanks for watching. Love and honor, everyone. This has been the 2022 Miami Football National Signing Day Special. Brought to you by Kimba Credit Union. Kimba, your trusted next door financial partner. Stay tuned. Chuck Martin's press conference will follow at 1215 this afternoon.